Good afternoon. Welcome to eSIMS Engineering. Uh, today I want to just give you a uh, quick example, for, well not so quick I guess, uh, but an example of a centroid, a composite centroid problem with a uh, negative area and I want to use this organizational chart to kind of walk you through all of the steps involved with finding the centroid of this particular uh, object. So here we have an object and it's, a, it's a basically a square overall shape and then there are two cutouts. One of the cutouts is a semicircle with a radius of 0.625 and the uh, third is a rectangle with a, uh, with a couple of unspecified dimensions that we would have to later calculate. So uh, let's take a look at this particular, um, uh, th let's take a look at this particular shape and we'll kind of identify all of the items on there. So the first shape is going to be a square, overall square. The second shape that's labeled number two is a semicircle. And the third shape, uh, which is also, it's a rectangle and that's that third and we can see that there's one, two, and three here with those items. So there's a one here, there's a two here, and there's a three here. Right. So that's the first three shapes, the uh, three shapes, excuse me, on here. Now, when we're finding the centroid, we kind of have to base it on how much of each shape is taking up area, and at the same time, we have to consider uh, the shapes that uh, are cut out. And we're going to consider this as negative area for the purposes of the calculation. That way we don't have to change any of the methods about how we're doing the problem in the first place. So we'll first find the area. And uh, it's a square here. So this square is 2 inch by 2 inch square, which means that the area of the square is 4 square inches. The semicircle is a radius of 0.625. And remember that we're going to do pi r squared over 2 because this is a semicircle. So the area of that would be half of the area of a regular circle. So pi r squared over 2 would be the area here. So if I get our calculator out, our calculator is uh, 0 0.625, and we're going to square that. Oops, we're going to square that. And then we're going to multiply 3.14 and divide by 2. So that means the area of this circle is 0 0.61 um, square inches. And moreover, it's negative 0 0.61, 0 0.61 square inches because it's a cutout. So we're going to consider that. And then the rectangle. Now this rectangle here, this dimension here is 0 0.625. And this is uh, the dimension from here to here is 1.375. So if I subtract the two of those, I get 0.75 is the dimension of this of the side of this rectangle, and the height is known over here. That's 0.5. So the area of this um, excuse me, the area of this rectangle is 0.375. But we're going to make it negative because again, it's a, it's a cutout. So we have those three items all set. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to locate the centroid of this object, but we're going to use a common reference point. So we're going to use basically this bottom left corner. And the reason this works is because we consider, we can, it's a lot easier to consider our centroid's points, uh, all of the three shapes, as positive numbers. So using the bottom left corner as a reference point is usually advised. It doesn't mean that if you can't make it in the middle, just understand that you know locating the composite centroid is kind of easier when you think about it. Uh, with a bottom left corner reference point because all the coordinates will be positive. So that's kind of what we're going to do here. Now the square is easy, right? Because a square, it's, it's, it's a rectangle, it's quadrilateral, and the centroid of a square on the whole is half of the base and half of the height. So if this is a two inch by two inch square, which it is, halfway here and halfway here would be the centroid of that. So in this case, the centroid is located at one inch from the reference point and one inch from uh, high off the reference point. So the coordinates of the square centroid is one, one. Now for the semicircle, the semicircle has a uh, horizontal uh, uh, orientation. So that means that the center, the x-coordinate of the center of the, of the semicircle is going to be the centroid's x-coordinate. So in this case, all the other way to look at it is, of course, where's the line of symmetry, right? Line of symmetry horizontally is this far away. It's one inch away. So the semicircle centroid is one inch on the x-axis. But on the y-axis, this is where we got to use that 4r over 3 pi formulas because the y-coordinate of the centroid, centroid excuse me, would be 4r divided by 3 pi, three times pi, right? So with this, we would have to uh, get this radius and just do 4 times that and divide by 3 times 3.14. So we'll go 4 times 0.625, that's the radius, and then we're going to divide that by open parentheses, 3 times 3.14, and then that's going to be 0 0.265. Now don't enter that into the table because all that's telling us is how far away from this point right here where my mouse is, is the centroid. Well, vertically, that's how far it is. And then, of course, the orientation of this means we're going to go down. So at this point, we are two inches high. And then we just have to go down this distance right here. So if I do 2 minus 0.265, that's going to be 1.735. So the y-coordinate of the centroid is 1.735 units away from the origin. 
Okay, so we do that. Now for the rectangle, same kind of deal here. It's a rectangle, so we're just going to do half of this distance and half of that distance. Well, vertically, that's easier because if we're here on zero, right? 0.5 up, half of that would be 0.25. But for the x coordinate, we got to do half of 0.75, which we actually know because we uh, kind of calculated it over here. We just used a different unit for it. 0.75 and half is 0.375, but remember, we're here, right? So if we go 0.625 plus 0.375, that gives us an x coordinate of 1. And that should make sense also because if we were to draw a line of symmetry down this object, basically it would cut this object into two equal parts. Uh, so we could sort of theorize that horizontally all three shaped centroids should be, um, they should be horizontally along this point. Uh, my line kind of got crooked a little bit there, but that's okay. All right, so, but you get the idea here. So now what we're going to do is we have just a couple of calculations to take care of. So we're going to first multiply the x-coordinate of each centroid's coordinates, x-coordinates, by the area of the shape. So with the x's, that's very easy because they're all 1, right? So to get this value, we're just going to type 4, and then it's going to be inches cubed. Now don't confuse that with volume. It's just the way the units work out. So we're just going to write those in here because we're multiplying each by 1, so that's not going to affect the final value. It's just going to make the unit inches cubed. So we have that. Now for the y-axis, though, we do have a couple of values that are not 1, so we have to do a little bit of math there. So this is going to be 4 inches cubed as well, which is 1 times the uh, area. And then this one here, we're going to go 1.735. Oh, I already had that in there. And then we're going to multiply that by 0.61, but we're going to make it negative. And of course, you can just do this manually because you know it's going to work out to be a negative number. And we get negative uh, 1.05. Uh, negative, we'll round it up to negative 1.06. Negative 1.06 cubic inches. Okay, and then here we have 0.25, and we're multiplying that by the area of negative 0.375. Let's make that negative, and then we're going to get negative 0 0.094 negative 0 0.094, okay? I probably could just say 0 0.09, but it's, it's okay. All right, so we have that. We have 4, we have that, and we have that. Now, the next thing to do is we're going to get some sums, okay? So we've got to go 4 uh, minus 0.61 minus 0.375, and we get 3.015. That's the sum of our areas. And we need that sum because we've got to divide each of the uh, coordinates by this number to get the total value. Now with this, you notice these numbers magnitudes are exactly the same, so we're going to keep it at 0 .3, sorry, 3.015. Here, we're going to go 4 minus 1.06 minus 0 0.094, and that gives us 2.846 as our sum. 2.846, did I get that right? Yeah, 2.846, okay. So now we have those numbers, and what we're going to do is we're going to let me make sure we're doing this right here. Yeah. So, okay, we're going to make sure that we add them all up, and then we're going to just divide and get these numbers. So in this case, this is going to be um, 3.015 divided by 3.015, right? It's the sum of the xas and divided by the a, right? So this would equal one. So that verifies that we indeed have the right number there. This one here is going to be 2.846 divided by 3.015, which is going to be light, slightly less than one. And that works out to be 2.846 divided by 3.015. That's going to be 0 0.94. So the centroid's location here horizontally is one inch to the right, and then 0 0.194 inches uh, up. Okay, so that kind of makes sense here. Now, this this drawing, I've, you know, is uh, works out nicely in this regard. The centroid moves down a little bit because of this cutout here and this cutout here, um, and uh, yeah, it works out pretty well here. I'm just going to check one thing though. 1.735 times um, 0.61. Yep. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, so I just wanted to make sure. So. That works out. That's your centroid problem. So the centroid's coordinates are 1, 0 0.94, and that's how you find the centroid of a composite shape with cutouts. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please remember to like and subscribe to eSIMS Engineering, and uh, we have lots of good Unit 2 videos uh, for PoE. So if you're in PoE right now, we have a lot of videos on this channel, and we'll have more videos on this channel such as this that will help you through the problems in this section. Hope you have a wonderful day. Don't forget to be awesome.